Welcome to the location of your emergency. Hey, 306, 306 C, two mile drive. My boyfriend's unresponsive. Um, okay. He has some poke wounds inside of himself, and he's going, I put him in the shower to revive him. He's not revivable. Please help okay. me. Please, you need, please. Tell me the address. I need, tell me the what address. Do I do? Warning, some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Since they both have the same first name, I will call the victim Nixon and the suspect Ryan. After receiving the 911 call, officers drove to Ryan's house and when they arrived, Ryan Lamb, who is Nixon's boyfriend, was outside waiting for them. When officers got to Ryan, they handcuffed him and took him to their vehicle due to his behavior. He was screaming and acting out, which is somewhat understandable because he called 911, stating he had found his boyfriend dead. Officers didn't know if Ryan was a victim too or if he was the suspect, but they wanted to take things slow. I need a man. Walk with me. Oh my God. No, baby. Oh my gosh, please. 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 That just came on. Two officers took Ryan down to the station to talk to the detectives and find out what happened. As other officers entered the house of Ryan and Nixon, when they opened the door, they located blood everywhere. There was blood on the staircase landing. They also said the bedroom and living room were a mess and looked like there was some type of fight happening inside that house. Things were tossed everywhere. They had clothes all over the floor, food tossed around, officers said. There was blood on the floor. The blood trail led from the front door to the kitchen and the bedroom and stopped at the bathroom. Officers had so much blood, so whoever did this, their DNA had to be among the blood there. When the officers opened the door to the bathroom, they saw the victim Nixon in the tub with the shower on, and he was in a sitting position at the back of the tub, and he was only wearing his underwear. When looking at Nixon's body, they saw the poke holes Ryan was talking about, and they realized the holes were from a pair of scissors they found full of blood. After seeing the scene, detectives want to have a chat with Ryan Lamb and hear his side of the story. Before talking to Ryan, they need him to calm down a little so he can understand what he is being asked. Detectives give Ryan more than an hour to gather himself before questioning him. Detectives want Ryan to give them a recap of his night and what happened when he arrived at Nixon's house. I just recall him coming in all over the street, practicing or something, and go in, and he was laying there, right on uh, the kitchen, the kitchen. There's a, a wall that separates the kitchen from the living room. Mm -hmm. He was laying up against that. He had scissors in his belly. And he was bleeding really heavily from the back of his head. They asked him how Nixon started bleeding from the back of his head and did he know anything about it. I don't know. There was blood on the back of his head. Why did he it up from the wall? And then he just called for help. And like, and he said it was fine. It was fine. He was totally like conscious and like, talking to me. Ryan told detectives that he and Nixon didn't have a working cell phone, so when he saw all the blood and the scissors in Nixon's chest, his first thought was to run to the gas station and call for help. Detectives were taken aback by this because they had a neighbor right next door. Why didn't he knock on their door for help or ask them to call 911? Detectives didn't understand why Ryan would run half a mile to the gas station to use their phone when he had neighbors. When detectives were talking to Ryan, they saw red spots on his chest, so of course, they asked Ryan what was wrong with his chest and can he explain. The marks looked like Ryan was stabbed by a fork, but they still wanted to hear Ryan's side. They asked Ryan was the marks caused by Nixon, to which he replied to them no, it was a rash he had. Ryan told detectives that it had nothing to do with Nixon, but it seemed a little hard to believe when it looked like he was being stabbed. You can see Ryan had poke marks on his chest and stomach, and most of the marks had fresh blood on them, so it wasn't old, and it wasn't a rash like Ryan said. Detectives asked Ryan again, to which he answered this time that the marks were from him and Nixon having rough sex and they were into hurting each other during sex. Ryan said they liked to be immobilized, and Nixon wanted to be choked with belts. He stated Nixon and him loved to have dangerous sex. Well, this really sex. 
The other detectives that were wrapping the crime scene up tried to talk to any neighbors to see if anyone heard or saw anything that fatal night. Detectives did find one neighbor that lived under Ryan and Nixon. They stated that late at night, you could hear to two people talking. You hear one gentleman say, ouch, you stabbed me in the chest, and the other voice said, well, you stabbed me with a fork. That made it easy for detectives to understand what happened that night because when talking to Ryan, you can see what looked like fork marks, and Nixon was found dead in a shower, so painting this picture wasn't hard. But detectives wanted to hear Ryan explain his side of the story. His hand holding him back. I'm not sure. You think he got up, like looking for me? Okay. Why? So he didn't leave him. I didn't leave him in the shower. I didn't leave him in the bathroom. Okay. He was right there by the clothes. And it was just the, it was so much blood. And then he started like being really like. Just on the back of his head like that. I thought he had like banged his head or maybe it poked him in the neck or something. After everything was said and done, detectives felt like they had enough to charge Ryan with Nixon's death, and this was his reaction. Information I have, uh, we're going to be charging you with deliberate homicide. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. No matter how badly Ryan wanted the detective to think he didn't hurt Nixon, the truth showed he violently murdered Nixon. The autopsy showed Nixon suffered from broken ribs and internal bleeding besides being stabbed. A number of Nixon's family members provided testimony about how the murder impacted them. One of the most emotional moments came when Nixon's mother, Lynn Nixon, described how the death of her son changed her life forever. Shame on you, Ryan Lamb, shame on you, she said, breaking down at one point. My son is in an urn in my living room, and that's all I have left. But you get to breathe and laugh and continue living. My son will never be able to do any of those things. Shame on you. Amber Nixon, Ryan Nixon's sister, also took the stand to recall the middle of the night call she received from her mother telling her that her little brother was dead. That was the worst call of my entire life, she said. Those words changed my life forever, Ryan is dead. The sister also took issue with the decision to give Lamb a plea deal where he could plead guilty to negligent homicide by way of a four, a legal nuance wherein a criminal defendant stops short of admitting guilt but acknowledges prosecutors have mounted enough evidence to obtain a conviction at trial. What you did was cold-blooded murder. There was nothing negligent about it, she said. Next, a therapist who worked with Lamb before and after the killing testified that she believed Lamb would do better going to an outpatient treatment center. Prior to sentencing, Lamb was attending a treatment facility in Portland, or the therapist said the defendant posed no threat to the community, only himself. The therapist also said that, based on her experience, Lamb displayed behavior suggesting he was in an abusive relationship. One of Nixon's family members scoffed at the suggestion from the courtroom's gallery and stormed out. Lamb then briefly spoke from the defendant's table, describing the progress he's made in achieving a sober lifestyle and his belief that incarceration would halt that growth. Lamb also expressed regret for what happened that night. He again said he killed Nixon in self-defense, but that ultimately he loved the man. Sometimes I wish I let him kill me that night instead of me killing him in self-defense, Lamb said before breaking down. Attorneys on both sides made sentencing recommendations, with prosecutors arguing that Lamb posed a danger to the public and should spend 10 years in prison. The defense attorney said Lamb should continue treatment while serving a 10-year suspended sentence to the Montana State Prison. Before handing down his sentence, Judge Allison said he believed Lamb and Nixon had a toxic relationship but that regardless of what happened, the defendant needed to face the consequences of his actions. There are some cases where punishment is not the priority. He said, in this case it should be. Along with the 10-year sentence, Lamb was forced to pay more than $10,000 in restitution to the family and the state crime victim advocate program.